Hii Kenya imeandikisha visa vingi zaidi vya maambukizi ya virusi vya corona tangu kisa cha kwanza kuripotiwa humo nchini. Huku Kenya sasa ikiandikisha visa 40 na vitano vya maambukizi ya COVID-19. Hebu nikupe nikupe takwimu kama uh, jinsi ambavyo Wizara ya Afya iliweza kutangaza hivi leo katika masaa 28 yaliyopita watu 1177 walipimwa uh, ugonjwa wa COVID-19 na watu 45 wakathibitishwa kuwa na virusi hivyo vya coronavirus. Uh, huku watu tisa wakiripotiwa kupona kabisa kutokana na ugonjwa huo na hakuna kisa chochote cha kifo kimeripotiwa kufuatia ugonjwa wa COVID-19. Hivyo ndivyo hali livyo hapa nchini Kenya. Watu katika masai 28 ya diopita, watu rubena watano wakiambukizwa virusi hivyo vya corona. Bila shaka mtazamaji ni hali ambayo inataka wa Kenya sasa kuchukua tahadhari uh, kabisa na kufuatilia magizo ya serikali kama jinsi ambavyo uh, yametangazwa. Acha nikupe vidokezo kisha baadaye nikupe taarifa kama jinsi ambavyo tumekuandalia jioni ya leo. Watu 45 zaidi waambukizwa virusi vya corona hiyo ikiwa ni idadi kubwa zaidi kuna kili humu nchini. It is true that it has been abused. It is a fact of life that people have been going to pubs or to Italy's. They order one sausage with two beers. They eat that one sausage. Anakula hiyo sausage moja na mbia mbili. Anatoka hapo. Anaingia hoteli ingine. Huku anakula bia mbili ingine na sausage ingine moja. Serikali ya tafakari kuna wa makali yake kutokana na mapuza ya wa Kenya. na maelfu ya watu waachwa bila makao mvua ya masika ikiponda maeneo kadhaa Karibu mtazamaji kwa taarifa hizo na nyinginezo hapa kwenye meza yetu ya darubini ya Channel 1. Kumbuka tunakupa fursa ya kutoa maoni yako na kufuatilia taarifa hizi kupitia mtandao wa Twitter at @kbc channel1 na at @beti gatonye na nitakuwa nikiangalia hoja zako na kuzipitia wakati darubini ya Channel 1 inasonga mbele. Karibu. Mimi ni Beatrice Gatonye Ngetich mtangazaji wa ishara jioni ya leo ni Byron Abuli. Na wizara ya afya imesema serikali na tafakari kutangaza hatua kali zaidi katika mitaa ambako visa vingi vya maambukizi ya virusi vya corona vimethibitishwa katika kaunti za Nairobi na Mombasa. Hiyo ni baada nchi hii kuthibitisha visa vingi zaidi vya maambukizi kwa siku moja tangu kuripotiwa kwa kisa cha kwanza. Idadi jumla ya visa vya maambukizi ya corona hapa nchini sasa ni 555 baada ya visa 45 zaidi kuthibitishwa huku mtawa Isili jijini Nairobi ukiongoza kwa visa 29. Idadi ya visa vya maambukizi ya virusi vya corona hapa nchini leo imezidi 500 baada ya visa 45 zaidi ya maambukizi kuthibitishwa idadi ambayo ni kubwa zaidi kuthibitishwa hapa nchini kwa siku moja. Our cumulative figure of those who have tested positive to the COVID-19 stands at 535 people. This, of course, is the highest number recorded in 24 hours ever since the first case on the 12th of March. Kulingana na takwimu za hivi punde, mtaa wa Isli jijini Nairobi umeongoza katika maambukizi mapya baada ya kuna kili visa vipe 29. The 29 cases that you have heard which are from Nairobi are all from Isli. That means that as we speak, there are 63 cases within the Isli area alone. That tells you then that there is community spread happening within Nairobi. Kaunti ya Nairobi ingali inaongoza katika maambukizi ya virusi vya corona ekiwa na visa miatatu kumina saba huku mtawa isli ukiongoza kwa visa siti na vitatu na kufuatiwa na kawangware kwa visa ishiri na vine. Kaunti ya Mombasa ni apili kwa visa miamoja siti na tisa ambapo mji wakale wa Mombasa peke umenakili jumla ya visa thalathi na tisa. We need to take action in those particular areas. And we are in the process today 
of consultation with the respective authorities in those counties so that we can determine what action uh, we are going to take. Wizara ya Afya sasa inawatahadharisha wa Kenya dhidi ya kurejelea mtindo wa maisha ya kawaida na kupuuza masharti yaliyotangazwa na serikali. Hata hivyo habari njema ni kwamba watu tisa zaidi wamepona na kufikisha 182 idadi ya jumla ya watu ambao wamepona hapa nchini. We seem to have come to the conclusion as a society that things have gone back to normal. Today's figures show things are far far from normal. Wakati huo huo madereva wa malori ya uchukuzi wa mizigo wameshauriwa kupimwa mahali wanakotoka ili kuepuka hatari ya kuzuiwa katika vituo vya mpakani. Huku idadi ya watu walioambukizwa virusi vya corona ikipita 500 siku ya Jumanne, Wizara ya Afya inasema ya kwamba mazungumzo yanaendelea ili kuongeza mikakati katika maeneo yaliyotambulika kuwa na visa vingi hususan katika kaunti ya Nairobi na Mombasa. Nancy Okware, Darubini ya Channel One. Shukran Nancy Okware kwa taarifa hiyo. Tuelekee katika kaunti tuangazie jinsi mambo kuhusiana na jinsi kaunti tofauti zinavyojitahidi kukabiliana na janga hili. Na jitihada za kuzuia kuenea kwa ugonjwa wa COVID-19 humu nchini zimepamba moto huku serikali za kaunti zikishirikiana na serikali kuu zikitekeleza hatua za kudhibiti ugonjwa huo. Hayo yanajiri huku takwimu za hivi punde zikionyesha kwamba visa vya maambukizi ya ugonjwa huo hapa nchini sasa vimezidi miatano. Ni wakati wenye changamoto nyingi huku serikali za kaunti zikijaribu kuweka hatua za kuzuia janga la korona. Huko Narok, vita dhidi ya ugonjwa huo vimeimarishwa huku wahudumu afya wakishirikiana na maafisa usalama. Hata hata mtu mmoja aigie Narok akiwa na hiyo shida kwa sababu akiingiza Narok ile negative uko naye itakuwa sasa na positive na itakuwa a hot spot. Kwa hivyo nyinyi tumeweka katika mlango mkumbuke ya kwamba kuwekwa kwa mlango uko na jukumu kubwa ya kuchunga wale wako hapo ndani na kuzuia ule mtu ambaye hatakiwa ajie ndani kuingia. Lakini ni hali ya tahadhari huko wajia ambapo wafanyabiashara wa mifugo wanaendelea kutumia mpaka wa Kenya na Somalia. Gavana wa Jia Muhammad Abdi amesema hali ilivyo inawahatarisha wakazi kuwa kuna uwezekano wa kuambukizwa ugonjwa huo. Visa vitano zaidi vya maambukizi vimeripotiwa chini ya saa 24 katika kaunti ndogo ya Wajia Mashariki. Kwingineko Mbunge wa kaunti ya Kirinyaga Wangoi Ngerichi anataka jamii zinazokabiliwa na changamoto kupewa msaada wa bidhaa muhimu kufuatia janga la ugonjwa huo. Waanze kuleta chakula kwa sababu chakula inapeano inapeleka huko kwa semiarid. Lakini wakumbuke Kirinyaga kaunti pia tuko na semiarid ambayo iko pande ya mwea ya downstream ambako pia watu wako na njaa mingi sana na wale ambao wako kazini makazi zimeenda chini huko Bungoma askofu wa kanisa la Kianglikana George Michumo ametaka serikali kulegeza sheria ya kutotangamana na kuruhusu watu kwenda kanisani right now we are fighting the pandemic called um, uh, coronavirus and uh, we do not want the attention to be diverted to go to other issues Um, other than the, 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 the thing that is happening right now for the sake of the unity of the country and also for the peace of this country na mzozo kuhusu wa Kenya waliozuiliwa kwenye mpaka wa Kenya na Somalia umechukua mkondo mwingine baada ya kundi moja la kutetea haki za kibinadamu kutishia kwenye mahakama na serikali ya Kenya lazima ifanye mikakati iwarudishe watu kwa haraka vile itakavyowezekana na ikiwa pata pata shindwa kwa kuwarudisha kwa muda fulani sisi hatuna budi tutakuwa na kotini kupata uamuzi wa mahakama. Na katika kaunti ya Samburu, mbunge ni Sula Lesuda ametoa msaada wa barakoa elfu kumi kwenye jitihada za kupambana na maambukizi ya ugonjwa COVID-19. Hatutaweza kupigana na hili janga kibinafsi. Tungeomba kwamba wale watu wote ambao wangependa kutusaidia ili tuweze kufikia hasua wale ambao hawajiwezi kwa sanitizers, kwa masks, kwa sabuni, hata kwa maji na kwa chakula. Tungewaomba sana waweze ku get in touch na sisi kama Samburu West Constituency. Na Isula amepongeza hatua ya serikali ya kutoa vifaa vya kujikinga na ugonjwa huo katika eneo hilo. 
Hatimaye wafanye bishara wa zao la mogoka huko Embu wameonya dhidi ya kupuuza maagizo ya serikali. Kamishna wa kaunti hiyo Abdullahi Galgalo amesema bado kuna uwezekano wa kuambukizwa ugonjwa huo ikiwa wafanye biashara hao hawatazingatia maagizo ya serikali. Tukitana na taarifa hiyo wa Kenya wengi wamegadhabishwa na baadhi ya watu wanaochukulia mambo kuwa kawaida bila kutia maanani hatari inayowakabili kutokana na ugonjwa wa COVID-19. Waziri wa Afya Mutahi Kagwe amewaonya vikale wale vikali samahani wale wanaopuuza maksudi masharti yaliyotangazwa kuzuia kuenea kwa ugonjwa huo kulingana na Kagwe takwimu za hivi punde zinaonyesha kuwa huenda hali ikawa mbaya zaidi ikiwa wakenya hawatakubali ama hawatabadili mienendo yao maelezo zaidi ni katika taarifa yake Caroline Kamau Hapa ni budalangi na mawingu yametanda kiasi cha kuogofia ni kana kwamba yanasherekea uharibifu lisababishwa ardhini maji imeenda na vitu vyangu nyumba yangu imeanguka yote sina chochote sina kitu hata njaya pia naoma kina chochote vitu vyote vimeenda hmm. tu, tuna maafa hmm. pali tuniza na mtazamaji taarifa hiyo ambayo umekuwa kitazama itakufikia baada ya muda mfupi kwani inahusiana na mafuriko yanayoendelea kukumba sehemu tofauti za humu nchini lakini kwa sasa tunakuletea taarifa yake Caroline Kamau ambapo wakenya wengi wamegadhabishwa na baadhi ya watu wanaochukulia mambo kuwa kawaida bila kutia maanani hatari inayowakabili kutokana na ugonjwa wa COVID-19 huku waziri wa afya Mutahikagwe akiwaonya vikali wale wanaopuuza maksudi masharti yaliyowekwa na serikali kuzuia kuenea kwa ugonjwa wa COVID-19. Hiyo ni taarifa yake Caroline Kamau. Tazama. Wiki iliyopita serikali ilitoa idhini ya kufungua baadhi ya mikahawa hapa nchini lakini masharti kwamba idumishi hatua zilizotangazwa na serikali za kuzuia kuenea kwa virusi vya corona. Mikahawa hiyo ilifungwa mwezi Machi punde tu baada ya nchi hii kudhibitisha kisa cha kwanza cha corona. Lakini kulingana na waziri wa afya Mutahi Kagwe, baadhi ya watu wanatumia vibaya fursa hiyo kwa kupuuza maksudi masharti yaliyotangazwa na wizara hiyo. It is true that it has been abused. It is a fact of life that people have been going to pubs or to Italy's. They order one sausage with two beers. They eat that one sausage anakula hiyo sausage moja na mbia mbili anatoka hapo anaingia hoteli nyingine huko anakula bia mbili nyingine na sausage nyingine moja eh anaingia nyingine anauliza chungwa ali sasa ni dessert na nyingine mbili now my friends Waziri alionekana kugadhabishwa alisema hali hii inafanya vigumu kwa serikali kulegeza masharti hayo. We start taking steps. Let not the same individuals start complaining that uh, you know you, to, you are going backwards and forwards. That's the challenge they will come. They will come the Ministry of Health doesn't seem to know what it is doing because it makes two steps for, forwards and then one step back. If that is the case, so be it. What we cannot allow is a situation where we begin to threaten our people just because of some few people who, who honestly cannot cannot behave nani idadi inayongezeka ya maambukizi mapya inayomkosesha mani waziri matter is where we are right now you are either with kenyans or you are against us when you are against us is when you expose other kenyans You cannot be behaving totally normally and then looking at every other Kenyan trying so hard and expect that you are going to be applauded for your action. Na isitoshe kuna uwezekano wa hali kuwa mbaya hata zaidi katika siku kadhaa zijazo. Hata hivyo amesema serikali haitasita kutangaza hatua kali hata zaidi ikiwa wakenya hawatepukana na mapuuza. I do not regret because the idea It came from a good place and it is not a Mutai Kagwe decision. These are people who are used to working in a hotel, working in a butchery, working in a, uh, in a in an income earning facility. 
that do not need government help. They don't need government help usually. So the idea is, why do we want, we are trying so hard not to transport people who usually don't need help to become people who need welfare. Waziri Kagwe hapo wakilezea masikitiko yake kuhusiana na wakenya ambao bila shaka wanachukulia kwa mzaha swala la COVID-19. Uh, na ni muhimu mtazamaji mahali popote ulipo kuchukulia swala hili kwa uzito unaostahili. Kwa sasa naelekea kwenye mapumziko ni kirejea ni tarifa zaidi usine mali. Institute of Curriculum Development, nurturing every learner's potential. Coronavirus COVID-19 is a respiratory virus spreading across the world. The infection is spread from droplets of coughing and sneezing of an infected person, touching or shaking hands or being in contact with contaminated surfaces or objects with the virus. The signs and symptoms are fever, coughing, headache, body ache, difficulty in breathing. The disease can be prevented by regularly washing hands with soap and running water. Avoid close contact with people who have flu-like symptoms. Avoid handshake, hugs and kissing. Also, protect yourself by covering your mouth or nose using a disposable tissue while coughing or sneezing. If you experience these symptoms and you had traveled or been in contact with a person from a country reporting COVID-19, you should isolate yourself for 14 days. Dial star 719 hash or call 719. This message has been brought to you by the government of Kenya and its partners. Karibu tena mtazamaji unaendelea kutazama darubini ya Channel 1 furaha yangu kwamba umekichagua kituo hiki kiwe kituo chako cha habari jioni ya leo tusonge mbele ambapo mamia ya familia katika eneo la Buldalangi kaunti ya Busia zimeachwa bila makao hukuma elfu ya nyingine zikilazimika kutafuta makazi kwingineko kutokana na mvua kubwa inayoendelea kunyesha katika eneo hilo na huku idara ya utabiri wa hali ya hewa ikionya kuwa hali hiyo itaendelea Wakazi wanahimiza serikali kutafuta suluhisho la kudumu kwa tatizo la mafuriko. Chola Simon anatuelezea zaidi kuhusiana na hayo. Hapa ni Budalangi. Na mawingu ya metanda kiasi cha kuogofia. Ni kana kwamba yanasherekea uharibifu lisababishwa ardhini. Maji imeenda na vitu vyangu nyumba yangu imeanguka yote. Sina kiochote, sina kitu hata njaya pia na uma kina kiochote, vitu vyote vimeenda. Hmm. Hmm. Tuna maafa, hmm. pali tuneza zika watu wetu, hata wakikufa leo, leo tumezika mwingine kwa maji. Tunachimba, tunazoa maji, tunaeka mawe. Hmm. La pili, tunuofia hizi ugonjwa inyi, hiko ya corona hii. Itazidi kutumaliza kabisa juu, hata maji ya safi inyi tuneza tumia hakuna. Kwa mama na watoto, hata saizi nimetoka huko kwa milima, kutafuta ngombe zangu na bibi na watoto. Hmm. Siku mbili sijawaona. Bijijini wakazi wanahatarisha maisha kwa kutembea kwenye maji ya mafriko hukua kitumia kila mbinu kuhamia maeneo salama. 
huu ndio umekuwa mtindo mpya wa maisha katika eneo hili maelfu ya maachwa bila makao na ni vigumu kubaini siku hali ya kawaida itarejea vijiji vilioathirika vibaya zaidi ni Maumau, Budalangi, Harambe na Nyambare na kando na kuitaka serikali kuingilia kati kuwasaidia wakazi pia wanataka suluhisho la kudumu kwa kero la mafuriko katika eneo hili wameanza wanaanza wakakuja ku, e, kutoa watu katika maboma zao wakisema dai kinaanza atu watawalipa wakawa wakwamba wamekadiria kulipa kiwango fulani cha mwenye e, mahali pale amekaa ambapo e, daiki ilikuwa ipitie kulingana walikuwa wanachukua mashamba watu wanataka kutengeneza daiki watu wahame wanunue hairia zenyewe ziko juu lakini kulikuwa na ukora ndani juu ile pesa walikuwa nalipa haiwezi tosha kukugurisha hapo wewe utafute shamba pale fulani na ujenge sasa hapo haikuenda na watu vizuri kuna wale wajalipwa baka leo busia ni miongoni mwa kaunti 29 ambazo naathirika vibaya na mafuriko hapa nchini huku idara ya utabiri wa hali ya hewa ikionya kuwa sehemu kadhaa zitaendelea kupokea mvua kubwa kwa wiki chache zijazo Achola Simon nikiripoti darubini ya Channel 1 kutoka kaunti ya Busia Haya mtazamaji tukiachana na taarifa yake Achola Simon kutoka Kisumu uko maeneo ya Budalangi Tuelekee katika kaunti ya Moranga ambapo kaunti hiyo sasa imezindua kitengo maalum cha wagonjwa mahututi katika juhudi za serikali za kaunti hiyo za kujiandaa kwa janga la virusi vya corona. Kitengo hicho chenye vitanda 30 na vitano ambacho kilijengwa katika muda wa siku 19 kitatoa huduma bila malipo kwa wagonjwa wanaolazwa katika wadi ya wagonjwa mahututi kwa muda wa miezi mitatu ijayo. <tos> Leo ilikuwa siku ya maadhimisho ya enzi mpya kwa wakazi wa kaunti ya Muranga waliposhuhudia uzinduzi wa moja wapo kitengo kikubwa zaidi cha wagonjwa mahututi katika eneo la Mlima Kenya. This ICU has everything. If there is any small item which has not arrived, it, it might be only because of the border issues with corona. Kitengo hicho kilitogarimu shilingi milioni 25 chenye vitanda 35 kilijengwa kwa muda wa siku 19 ambapo kilitarajiwa kukamilishwa kwa muda wa siku 21. Kitengo hicho cha wagonjwa mahututi kina vitanda 35, mashine za kusaidia kupumua na zile za kuosha figo na pia mashine za kuchunguza matatizo ya kiakili. Na mkina sadaruki imegawanywa katika sehemu mbalimbali. Mbali. Hapa tuliposimama panajulikana kama HDU, yani High Dependency Unit, ambapo mgonjwa huweza kuletwa baada ya kutolewa sehemu ya wagonjwa mahututi. Vile vile kuna sehemu mbalimbali mbali, kama vile sehemu ya watoto ambao wameza kuzidiwa, ama sehemu ya wagonjwa walio na shida za figo, ama sehemu za kutengwa ambapo wagonjwa walio na magonjwa kama vile coronavirus huweza kupelekwa. Daktari Kanye Gitau anaangazia operesheni za kitengo hiki. With the bed is also attached there should be a suction machine like you can have you can see one here. In case a patient has aspirations or secretions they need to be sucked that's used for that. Then we have the monitor there. The monitor is to monitor how the patient is doing in terms of uh, breathing in terms of the heartbeat Daktari Margaret Muyoro mkuu kitengo cha wagonjwa mahututi anasema serikali ya kaunti hiyo tayari imewaajiri wauguzi 35 wa kuwatunza wagonjwa mahututi kupitia utaratibu wenye ushindani and I can testify that the, the nurses which are will be working here they are highly qualified registered and uh, registration by the nursing council we did an interview like four times last week and uh, we are able to get 35 physical care nurses some of them are from all the way from Nairobi i don't want to mention the facilities but uh, they are inclusive all everyone from this republic of kenya vana wa kaunti ya muranga mwangi wairia akisema kaunti hiyo itakuwa na kituo cha kutibu ugonjwa saratani kufikia mwezi disemba kama sehemu ya juhudi za serikali yake za kuimarisha utoaji huduma za afya katika eneo hilo so we put in place a process whereby we are immediately after this because we really want to make this a center of excellence we are starting and i don't mean a cancer unit a cancer hospital 200 beds fully fledged and it doesn't matter the cost and we must present that cancer hospital to cancer patients before the end of this year 
na mhamna refu lisilokuwa na mwisho na kwa wakazi wa kaunti ya Muranga huu ndio mwisho wa safari yao ya kuelekea katika hospitali ya Kenyatta wanapozidiwa kwani wameza kufunguliwa sadaruki hapa katika hospitali ya Muranga level 5 ambapo wataweza kufaidika Nikiripoti ya Darubini ya Channel 1 kutoka kaunti ya Muranga jina langu ni Sarafina Robi Shukran Sarafina Robi kwa taarifa hiyo kutoka kaunti ya Muranga na afisa mmoja mkuu wa shirika la huduma kwa misitu nchini anauguza majeraha mabaya baada ya kuvamiwa wakati wa shughuli ya kuwaondoa watu katika msitu wa Kirisia kaunti ya Samburu. Hayo yanajiri huku shirika hilo likiimarisha mipango ya uhifadhi wa misitu hapa nchini. Ni shughuli iliyopelekea serikali kuchukua hatua za dharura kurejesha misitu katika hali halisi kufuatia misitu kudorora kutokana na kile kinachotajwa kuwa mabadiliko ya hali ya hewa nchini na kama njia moja ya kuafikia hayo makatibu wa wizara mbalimbali wiki hii wanatumia wakati huu wa mvua kubwa kupanda miti katika maeneo mbalimbali katika kaunti ya Nairobi It is upset with us. We have to do something urgently. Miche mia sita ilipandwa leo katika eneo la Wangari Mathai kona kwenye msitu wa Karura. Shughuli hiyo iliongozwa na afisa mkuu wa hifadhi wa misitu Julius Kamao akishirikiana na wenzake pamoja na wadau wengine kwenye kampeni iliyopelekea kupandwa kwa miti milioni moja katika vituo moja na saba katika mwezi wa Aprili pekee. Shughuli hiyo ni mojawapo ya harakati za kupanda miti iliyopangiwa kufanyika wiki hii katika kaunti ya Nairobi ambapo Wizara ya Misitu imewaleta pamoja makatibu wa Wizara kuwa mstari wa mbele kwenye shughuli hiyo. And therefore what we are in Kenya is if every Kenyan of the 45 million of spanda tree, a single tree marking your birthday during this season, we are able to push this country to more than 10% even beyond before 2022. Haya yanajiri huku afisa mkuu mmoja wa huduma kwa misitu nchini akipata majeraha mabaya alipokuwa akitekeleza wajibu wake huko kaunti ya Samburu. Inspekta mkuu Geoffrey Okeyo alikuwa akihutubia umati uliokitakambi katika eneo la Tamioi wakati alipovamiwa na Morani aliyejihami kwa kisu na kumkata mkono. Kwa wengi. Batokati waliona askari wamekoka bunduki kila mtu alianza kutapakaa kitaroka hapa na pale. Yeye yeah, akiwa mojapo lakini wakati askari walikoka nilimwambia don't shoot. Mshukiwa huyo alikuwa miongoni mwa kundi la watu hamsini waliopinga hatua ya serikali iliyotaka watu kuondoka eneo hilo. Kwa maafisa wa idara ya misitu na wote wenzao waliohudhuria hapa leo, ujumbe wao ni mmoja na mmoja tu. Upanzi wa miti hausaidii mazingira yetu kwa vizazi vya leo tu, bali vizazi vya kesho na vijavyo. Yusuf Farah, Darubini ya Channel 1, Nairobi. maji sasa kwa taarifa za biashara hapo baadaye nitakuwa nikikuletea zile za sporti uh, <laughs> namsikia na na namsikia mwelekezi wangu akieleza kwamba hivi leo hatutakuwa na taarifa za sporti haya tuangazie za biashara wawekezaji kwenye soko la hisa la Nairobi walipoteza shilingi bilioni 173 kupitia mauzo ya haraka ya hisa baada ya kuzuka kwa janga la COVID-19. Thamani ya hisa za kampuni kadhaa kwenye soko hilo ilishuka kwa asilimia 14 mwezi uliopita kwa mujibu wa halmashauri ya soko la mtaji. Halmashauri hiyo imesema kuwa wawekezaji wa kigeni walisheheni shughuli za biashara katika soko hilo kati ya mwezi Januari na Machi kwa zaidi ya asilimia 80 taarifa kamili tuungane na ripota wetu aliyetuandalia mkusanyiko wa taarifa za biashara Kudorora kwa shughuli katika soko la hisa la Nairobi kumetokana na mazingira mabaya ya kiuchumi hatua iliyochochea wawekezaji wa kigeni kugura soko hilo Shughuli zimepungua kwenye soko hilo hususan mauzo ya hati za wawekezaji wa umma ya pata miaka saba iliyopita Hatua hii imesababisha thamani ya hisa kushuka huku wawekezaji wakipoteza shilingi bilioni 173 kufuatia chamko la virusi vya corona duniani lililolazimu wawekezaji kuhusa hisa zao kwa pupa. Kwa mujibu wa halmashauri ya kudhibiti soko la mtaji, 
Thamani ya hisa za kampuni zilizoorodheshwa kwenye soko hilo lilishuka kwa asilimia tano kutoka shilingi trilioni mbili na thelathini na sita mwezi machi mwaka elfu mbili na kumi tisa hadi shilingi trilioni mbili kufikia mwishoni wa mwaka elfu mbili na ishirini. Wakati huo huo, utekelezaji wa lapset unaounganisha bandari ya Lamu na nchi za Sudan Kusini Ethiopia unaendelea licha ya chamko la ugonjwa wa COVID-19 kuchelewesha mradi huo. Kwa mujibu wa kampuni ya China Communications Construction inatekeleza mradi huo, wafanyikazi wote wametakiwa kwenda kambini ili kupunguza maambukizi ya virusi vya corona. We really appreciate their continually collaboration with us, making our work easier and accessible to areas that need our uh, help. We, we therefore, on behalf of the Minister of Health, Lamu County, say thank you to the company. Kila mfanyikazi anahitajika kuvaa barakoa na kupimwa viwango vya joto kila wakati. Hatimaye, Kenya itakadiria athari za uharibifu wa nzige kwa chakula kufikia mwezi ujao. Katibu katika wizara ya kilimo Hamadi Boga amesema kundi la wataalamu linakadaria hasara hiyo huku mvua ya masika ikisitisha shughuli za unyunyizaji kemikali dhidi ya nzige hao kwa kutumia ndege. Shilingi milioni tano tayari zimetengwa kukabiliana na nzige hao. Logistics of chemicals from Japan where the source of some of the chemical is has been a challenge because of the grounding of aircrafts. Uh, so now we have to use the sea route so it takes a little bit longer so we have to plan better so that we don't run out of stock Mtazamaji kwa taarifa hizo za biashara hapo ndipo tunatia kikomo darubini ya channel 1 jioni ya leo asante sana kwa muda wako na tumoe umeweza kufaidi taarifa ambazo tumekuandalia haswa kuhusiana na virusi vya corona ambavyo vinaendelea kuenea hapa nchini kwa kasi muhimu sana jukumu lako mtazamaji wewe kuchukua kwa makini wale ambao wanachukulia swala la uh, maagizo ya serikali kwa uepesi tunawaomba tafadhali muweze kuzingatia kwani utakuwa ukijua kwa wewe na maisha ya jirani yako maisha ya familia yako na kutakia usiku mwema naitwa Beatrice Gatonya Ngatisi mtangazaji wa ishara jioni ya leo College. Vera Beauty and Fashion College with branches in Nairobi, Eldoret, Fika and Meru. Did you know that we are a TVET approved institution? We offer courses in fashion design, interior design and soft furnishing, event decoration, flower arrangement, event planning, hairdressing, barbering and dreadlocks, beauty therapy, makeup, nail technology, spa massages, teaching skills, TOT, solo business management, and many more. Register now and visit our website on www.verabeautycollege.com. You can also call on 0725-923-550 Nairobi Branch, 0728-087-689 Eldoret Branch, 0722-227428 Fika Branch, 0725-000 706 Meru Branch, Vera Beauty and Fashion College, a TVET approved institution. I found out that my father is in Patliputra. How did you get to know about Acharya it? Acharya Chanakya told me. But he is not telling me who. They killed your grandfather, you know. And. They set your heart on fire. I've learned how to please the authority in order to use the power in my favor. Acharya Chanakya cannot hide the truth in front of Emperor Bindusa. Do you know who my father is? Yes. I must tell the truth to His Highness.
Habari yako? So, did you like the boxes ideas? Bear knuckle fighting is out. 